Yummy. Hi there. It's Danny Gregory. And by now you are probably really hungry to draw, right? That was fun. Spinning donuts. Today is Thursday, August 20th. Is it International Donut Day? Hard to say. But we're going to make it so. Today we are going to draw junk food. Just junk, whatever it is. Because we may not be able to eat it, particularly after you reach a certain age and a certain paunch, paunchiness, whatever, whatever you're trying to do to protect your health, you can draw anything though. And one of the nice things about um, drawing is, well, 
ink has no calories. And, uh, you know, sometimes drawing something can make you actually sick of it. So I've always had this thought that maybe I should write a diet book in which uh, I recommend that people, every time you want to eat something, draw it instead and see how that works for you. What do you think? Is that a best-selling idea or, or what? Anyway, thank you all for joining me. Uh, Jim and Nancy and Maria and Karen and Lisa and Kate and Catherine and Corinne and Thistle and Diana and Margaret and Charmaine and Annika and all of you. It is nice to be here with you today. Um, so today, we, if you haven't, please download the little uh, um, sheet. I put it up there before that allows you to draw from the photographs, but I'll put the photographs up as we draw from them. I don't have, in fact, we had an idea that we would go out and get donuts today, but then J Jenny and I both decided it would probably be not a great idea to have boxes of donuts sitting around the house. So even if they were just props for this, for this thing today. So instead we're gonna be drawing from photographs. Um, this is birthday season here at the Gregory household. Birthday season begins around August 10th is my son's birthday. It continues through August 17th, which is my mother-in-law's birthday. It starts to really blossom on August 22nd, which is my wife's birthday, and then kind of starts to fade by September 4th, which is my birthday. So we have this month in which there's a lot of birthday cake sitting around, and there's a lot of just general sense of licentiousness. We have license to eat, drink, do whatever the hell we want for the month of August. And the fact that it's 2,000 degrees here in Phoenix makes us feel even the more so, even the more uh, that we have permission to just go crazy. The pandemic doesn't help. You know, adding on our COVID-19 pounds, or if you're in Europe, 19, or Canada, 19 kilos, perhaps. But we are, uh, we are going to work on, as Thistle says, virtual cakes. Today will be virtual cakes of all kinds. Um, so let's get to it, shall we? And decide how we're going to handle this exactly. So here we have the old sketchbook. Come on. I was thinking initially that I might do this on the iPad just because uh, I'm craving some bright colors. But... I'm going to try and do that uh, in my sketchbook instead, try and get some good, good colors going. Um, because even if we're drawing something brown, and it does seem like a lot of tasty foods are brown, um, we can still figure out a way to, to uh, make them feel bright and colorful. So there we go. There's, there's my first victim, which is this chocolate chip cookie. Seize candies, Holly. Seize candies are definitely a weakness for us. There's something I had never known about because they were a West Coast phenomenon. But then um, Warren Buffett bought Seize candies, and now there are stores everywhere, including in New York City. So that was dangerous. Yes, the leaf blower is here. In fact, he's right outside the window. Thank you. Oh, no, actually, it's a chainsaw. Anyway, let's ignore him. Let's concentrate on cookies. Cookies, OK. Um, I also am excited because I got a cart for my art supplies. I bought it from Ikea, and uh, let me see if I can show it to you over there. Can you see it? It's upside down. Uh, that's not very impressive. Anyway, that is, that's my cart. It's a nice metal cart, and uh, it's something I've been wanting for a while. Just so I don't have just endless stuff piled up all over my desk, I could have just one thing. Let me move this cookie out of my way of drawing the cookie. So, yes, it's a cart. The most exciting thing. This, this is the most exciting place on YouTube right now because we're talking about carts. Cookies. So, yeah, so, um, you know, this is the kind of drawing that you, I'm going to have to make a decision fairly early on what ex how exactly I'm going to approach it and possibly how I'm going to approach 
the entire page because I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put in this this kind of general shape because I I don't really want to um, I have to decide like how how intensely am I gonna get into drawing this cookie and I think when we reach into the bag of things and see what comes out um, here we have an 05 and a three. So that's the question is, where do we go 05 or three? See, if we spent 05, I would probably spend the rest of this hour just drawing crumbs and nooks and crannies. But instead, I'm going to go with the 03 because I want to, I want to try and get, I want to binge on as much food as I can. And uh, so some of you may have drawn toast with me before, um, or actually a couple months ago we drew granola. Boy, this is getting more and more exciting, isn't it? Aren't you glad you joined us today? Um, because, yes, drawing drawing things like this that are organic um, are really interesting to me, at least, because, because you, you know, I like to equate it to being sort of an explorer on a distant planet, you know, and just trying to map what planet cookie looks like. You know? So... Um, Get this camera to behave in a second. Ah, beautiful. Okay. Um, so yeah. So when you look at something organic like this, it's just it transcends language in the sense that you don't you don't necessarily have you might have like a shorthand for how you draw cookies, right? You might have like a cartoony version of drawing cookies, um, but when you really look at a cookie, it's sort of a strange thing, full of unpredictable shapes and, um, you know, lines. And you kind of have to make a decision how intense in depth am I going to get. And as I said earlier, like you could really go deep on this cookie. And if it was a real cookie right in front of me, as opposed to a photo, I would even be able to see more details. And so you could really spend the better part of the day and then you'd really have earned that cookie, don't you think? Then you could say, yep, I deserve to eat that cookie. But so I'm just looking for a colored pencil. Because I think I just want to add some, some tone to this. But you notice also, like, I'm, I'm, try, I'm being rough with my color, and I'm being kind of specific and a bit more slow and detailed with my lines. This is kind of the way I want to do this, you know, and I might add in a little bit of tone. So I'm going to make this look a little bit dimensional by adding this. This is an ink tense colored pencil, which is beautiful because it is also um, becomes watercolor when you do that. So you can just add a, a hit of, of dimensionality there to it. Uh, so I could even do that with these, but I won't just go too far with that. But you can see it starts to look, you know, I, I think if I'd colored all that in with, with my pen and made them black, it would have been less appetizing. And that is our goal. Our goal is to drool constantly while drawing, uh, and it's possible that you can activate your watercolor if saliva falls out of your mouth onto the page. So I would recommend wearing a bib while drawing. Yeah, we're going to get into all kinds of protective equipment. Masks, of course. Gloves, of course. Maybe uh, helmets, but certainly bibs. My wife would like me to eat with a bib. And... Uh, You know, not to get crumbs on things, but there you go. All right, so that's a cookie. I think that that's, that's done. We're done. I'm going to have a sip of coffee to go with my cookie. What next? We have to think of some logic, by the way, for what this page is going to be about in my schedule, because it can't just be a bunch of random foods. There's got to be some reason. So. I'm going to think, keep thinking about that. Like, what's the story that I'm telling with this sudden random page of stuff? Let's put him over here. 
All right, that's a good looking cheeseburger. Um, let's think about how we're going to approach this. We could do the same technique again with markers and then colored pencils. Maybe we'll do that. It's it worked out fairly well. And I do have a number of these brown markers here. I bought this set from Windsor Newton. These are pigment markers. And I bought two different sets. And one of them was I think, called Flesh Tones, which actually was a band that I really liked in the 80s that uh, my best friend's brother-in-law, Peter Zaremba, was the front man for the Flesh Tones. It was sort of a garage rock band. The problem with, uh, I don't know, Flesh Tones, I, I think in this day and age, we can't even use that term. I think it's just not acceptable anymore to talk about Flesh Tones. But um, here are the ones that they gave me. But instead of calling them Flesh Tones, we're going to call them, you know, Junk Food Tones. The tones we're going to use to draw junk food today. I'm going to make this burger kind of small here. Um, and again, I'm just kind of roughing in these color slabs because um, I just want sort of basic areas of color. And then I'm going to kind of give them some meaning in a minute, um, depending on how things go. I don't really have an orange, a red, I mean, Wait, did, don't I have a red? It's not like oversight. Oh yeah, I do have this red. I have a red marker. Exciting. All right, so yeah. And I have some green, too. So just... These are kind of just areas that I think I'm going to have this tone, this, these shapes in. I'm just drawing it really quickly, and then I'm going to come back in with my O3, and I'm just going to kind of make... Because I, I like... There's a, there's a concept in... I think it's in printmaking, basically. It's also... I know it also from, from publishing, which is... Which is when things are off-register, right? So it's true, you know, when you do a screen print and your screens aren't completely, perfectly lined up, you end up getting colors that don't line up properly. And, um, you know, you get, sometimes you get the line not sitting quite on top of the, you know, not quite defining the shape that it's coloring because of the printing error. And I've always sort of liked that. I don't know. I think it reminds me of when I was a kid and, um, when I was living in Pakistan in particular, you know, we would get these school books and stuff like that that were, I don't even know where they were printed, but um, some of the printing technology was kind of crude, and it would just, I don't know, it just reminds me of, of sort of inexpensive kids' books when the color registration is off, and so the lines don't line up, and it feels, it feels sort of organic, so on the one hand, you have this mechanical process, right, which is printing, done by machines, but yet it has a sort of a fallibility to it that is kind of human, and I like that um, juxtaposition, I guess you could say, the juxtaposition of the perfectionism. And it's a reminder, you know, that you can't be perfect, even if you're a machine sometimes, so why bother? There's actually much more charm and humanity in mistakes, and that's something to kind of remind myself about, too, um, as I'm drawing. It's, like it, it's not about making it perfect. Or else I could just, I could just put that photo in my sketchbook. And that would be perfect. So, alrighty. Um, now let me just kind of goose this a little bit, add some colored pencils to really just take, because this marker, I like to use this marker basically as a base, basically as a base, and then use colored pencils to make the color richer, which it does. It makes it, the marker ink absorbs into the paper fairly quickly. You know, it can, it can be bright, certainly there are bright markers, but
they can also look really artificial and fluorescent. There's something about colored pencils that is both bright and also human again. And, but colored pencil, the thing I don't love about colored pencil is just the, the flatness of it, because colored pencils are basically one color. You know, but then when you take this water brush and you dilute the watercolor pencil, it kind of has a different quality. It brightens it up, certainly, because of these ink-tense pencils. They brighten up. But also it softens it and it gives you some variations, you know, so that the uh, color is, is, has, has chain variations. Well, I just said variations, so let me say it again. Let's all say it together. Okay, so that's, it looks messy on the camera, though, than it does in person, but it looks pretty juicy. And I guess that's the objective. Bit of juiciness and uh, tasty. Been eating a fair amount of burgers this summer just because we have a barbecue, which is for us New Yorkers, it is a novelty to have a barbecue sitting right outside the front house. I mean, the, the back door, front house. Going back to Pakistan, a little bit in my intonation. My vocabulary is somewhat compromised. I spent uh, two years in, as a kid in Pakistan, but I actually went to Pakistan about five times. My mother was born there. So it is the place that I considered home probably more than any other. And I love Pakistani people. So excited the first time I ever met a Pakistani cab driver in New York because uh, I felt like I was kind of home. That was nice. Anyway, boy, this is a far ranging discussion. Uh, okay, so we've got our hamburger sorted. What would be a hamburger without a hot dog? Yes, it's a tasty looking wiener. So, hot dogs. Um, you know, I had dachshunds for a while, we called them wieners, and they're known as hot dogs as well, too. So, uh, in New York, of course, has a lot of good hot dogs. Try this. But, the hot dogs I've seen here in Phoenix are at Costco prides itself on its $2 hot dog. I'm kind of scared of that. I'm a little scared of drawing this hot dog because dealing with that mustard How am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? See, that just doesn't look like anything. Okay, we'll fix it. We will fix this. So, yeah, so that, so we've had a couple of barbecued hot dogs, but, you know, without baseball games, being able to go to baseball games, usually around this time of year, we go to see, uh, the New York, New York has a really great, minor league baseball stadium in Coney Island where the Coney Island Cyclones play. And usually toward the end of August, that's, that's kind of a tradition with us. We've been going out to Coney Island and, and uh, let's see, that's not happening this year, but there's a nice tradition. They have they have a clown, they have fireworks at the end of each game. Minor league. Ah, what about this? Pop.
Oscar pen. Yeah, that could be right. There we go. Posca. You guys know this? Posca? These are like, they're almost like paint markers. Made by Mitsubishi. Yeah, those are nice. So, yeah, so now that I have that, I can go in and uh, make a bit more contrast. My hot dog. It's a bit tastier. It's a little bit like it's riddled with some disease, though. Um, yeah, so it's really nice to go to this stadium, and they have really good food there. It's not just like crummy hot dogs, they have like sort of hipster gourmet hot dogs, and uh, lots of ice cream and stuff. Good. I'm not a huge sports fan generally. There are things that I like about sports though that are more sort of sensory, I guess you could say. Like baseball, I love the sound of a baseball game on a summer evening. You know, maybe if you're in the back of a cab and the cab is playing it, or if you're like sitting outside with the windows open. I remember having an apartment that had a fire escape and we'd sit out there and you just hear somebody playing playing the radio and this baseball on the radio. It's just really nice. So I may have to leave this to dry and come back to it, but that's our hot dog for now. It's gonna it's gonna need some help. I realize that. Cake. Okay, so where can we put this cake so we can draw it and see it? Okay, we just hold it in the middle of the cake up there. I'm going to approach this cake differently because I'm I'm not entirely happy with how that hot dog came out, so I have to. Make do a different approach. This is actually a pretty good looking cake. It was a little ugly at first, but it's pretty nice. What kind of cake is this? Chocolate layer cake? Is that what it's called? Any bakers out there? Any cake aficionados? You know what? I actually just had an idea, which is I might not give this cake the full treatment. I might just, I kind of am liking it kind of looks as a sketch. Here comes the leaf blower.
Yeah, I'm going to leave that there. Sorry, I just muted you for a minute. Well, you muted me because, you know. All right, that was ganache, yes. Ganache, that's true. So I, I'm just kind of leaving it like this. I sort of like it on the page. Now, here's a different kind of thing to do, which is a piece of popcorn, just one piece. We're gonna be a little bit more frugal here, but I just think this is a really cool shape. It's a really cool shape, and it's an opportunity to kind of get nutty with some cross hatching if you want it. So you know what I'm actually gonna do? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lay down. Yeah. This. Uh, Cause I'm sort of thinking I'd like to have a little bit of color underneath here, but not, not too intense, just something that makes this not just be a complete black and white line drawing. So, right, here we go. It's very yellow, more yellow than I had hoped. That's okay. We'll deal with it in some way. I'm diluting it a bit more, and then... Um, take my trusty towel and just knock it back. This has the other function also of making it dry enough to draw on. So now we can have a look at this go back to drawing this guy. Sort of looks a little bit like an animal. Like a little sort of strange popcorn dog or meteor. Here's his chest. Here's his one limb. Here's his other limb. And here's I guess it's sort of back limb. Popcorn. It's another thing. You can make popcorn at home sometimes. It's not bad, but definitely think about popcorn and going to the movies. Again, baseball games. Popcorn, Cracker Jacks, right? Things of summer. Maybe that's what this. Maybe that's what has inspired this. Curian spread in my book is thinking about the the junk food of summer. The term we use in our family for eating all this stuff, and particularly if you're really going nuts with it, is we call it a hog fest. Hog fest 2020. So that might end up being what the name of this page is in my sketchbook, Hogfest. It's a very abstract thing, this piece of popcorn, this kernel, single popped kernel. That's what, that's, I really always have enjoyed drawing things that you don't really study that closely, you know, so you don't, they're almost unrecognizable. You know, it's, it's sort of like, do you remember that thing when you're, that we used to have, uh, I guess it's when we were kids, I was going to say when we were kids, but it's not necessarily a kid's thing, which is when they would have 
incredibly magnified photographs of everyday objects and you'd have to identify them. You know, like, what is this? Oh, it's a Phillips head screw. What is this? Oh, it's, you know, the part of the seeds of, on a strawberry, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a reminder of the fact that a lot of times we think we know what things look like, but we don't really. And when you draw them, that's when you stop to study them and to notice things about them. And, you know, not to get too highfalutin about it, but that's, to me, one of the great things about drawing is that it helps you to really see things as they are. Not as we think they are, not the preconceptions that we have put in the computer banks of our brains, you know, that we have pigeonholed, but to really look at them and say, oh, okay, see what that thing looks like for real. Now I'm going to use this, what's called a blender marker, a white blender, and uh, it's a pretty subtle thing. What it allows you to do is, it's, it's a little bit like white paint sometimes, but sometimes it's, it really extends that color. So, it's pretty subtle here. Sticking on camera, it looks even more subtle. But I can also use this miraculous thing, that I think I've shown you before, this Presto Jumbo Correction Pen. I'm going to use it to correct necessarily, but I'm going to use it just to add a little bit of white and see if that works. Kind of does. It's just a way of adding a really opaque piece of white to your drawing. All right. We are now done with the leaf blower. Stephanie, I'm glad that you're getting power washed while I'm doing this. Okay. So there's, there's the hog fest. Now what I probably will do, and I'm not going to do it right now, while you're here, I need a little privacy for this, but I'm thinking I might write, I might fill this whole background of this page with writing. Like I've done that a few times, um, like this sort of thing, where it's all writing that just kind of sits behind it. And so I might just have a page of s stuff there, and I might write the word Hogfest in here, I might write it down here. but page, to me, a page of um, things like this is an opportunity really for composition and to think about composition, to think about your page. Like Here are these, basically these five floating shapes, but text can anchor them. You know, you could also put shadows, but that would be weird. Like, you could have shadows that connect to them, but I've drawn them in all different scales. So this cake is pretty small, the popcorn kernel is gigantic, the cookie's kind of in between. And so when you, if you start putting shadows on them and try to act as if they were really there on the page, it would, I don't know, it just would seem a bit unnatural. But, but you can use text. And I also kind of like the fact that I did these in five different ways. Um, and I'll probably go back into this hot dog and kind of work on him some more. So that's sort of my idea for this. Um, so, you know, I think having, having uh, an idea can be something that you begin with, or it can be something that evolves, having an idea for a composition. You know, um, a lot of times, I remember learning about composition. Well, actually, I can't say I learned about composition, because I never really did. I, I can remember wanting to learn about composition. And, and actually, I had went out and bought a couple of books called Composition, or How to Compose Things, and they weren't really helpful. It was really difficult. And maybe if I had a degree in, in graphic design, maybe some of you do, and give me some tips on this, but generally I feel like composition is something that comes intuitively to a lot of things. It's just a feeling of balance, you know, and there's so many different elements in composition that that play into, a, into this balance. <laughs> what I mean is the size of the thing is one element, the uh, boldness of the lines is another element, the color of it, the visual interest of it, like how interesting is it going to be? All those things give each element weight. And a 
creating a composition can be about you know uh, just making sure that one thing doesn't necessarily dominate or it might you might want it to dominate because you want your eye to go there then do the others support it and a lot of this is like a tweaking thing moving things back and forth the computer is really helpful for that because you can move elements around the page pretty easily you can um, you know, increase their size, their opacity, all those kinds of things. It can also be an endless tweak fest that you just keep worrying about perfection endlessly. And, and that's one of the problems in general with making art and visual art on the computer is there's no end to it. But when you do a drawing like this, you put down stuff and then you go, okay, this isn't really working out the way I thought it was going to be. So I came in with an idea. It isn't really working the way I thought it was going to be. So now I have to I have to adjust, I have to add new elements, and I have to balance the color, and I have to do all these things. And you're just going back and forth. And I think that that's a natural process, and it's really interesting. It's an interesting part of the game. You know, and I think a lot of times I see people sketch pages, and they aren't thinking about composition at all. They're just simply doing a bunch of drawings on a page, and they're just wedging them in. And then they, you know. And I, I personally like to think about the page, the way you would think about a page in a book, you know, which is to say there are different elements. There's the type, there's the visual elements, there could be um, embellishments, like you could draw lines that connect things or a frame around things. Um, there's also white space, emptiness. You don't necessarily want to cram your whole page full of stuff. Sometimes you could have um, a small object in a corner, and let me see if I can find an example. Well, this is a page that I, let me go back to this, this is a page that I did, I started working on with you guys. Remember we did this whole gratitude page, and when we did the gratitude page, I had done this, but I then went back in and I did this writing, and then I wrote this giant thing here, and then I had this white space that was still empty, so I added this guy in here. Was a beetle that I had seen, and then that pa that part felt kind of empty, so I put filled that in, and then I wrote this little thing down here. So all these elements together, I'm still not feeling this is an entirely well balanced page. I'm not sure about the space, but it feels to me more continuous. You know, this is a page that I did this drawing, and then I wrote this stuff, and I don't know what to do with this. But I kind of like the fact that there's nothing there, but it doesn't really feel completed finished so those are things you know or this spread the spread I'm pretty happy with you know um, I did it I'm not sh entirely sure if I like this blank space but I'm trying to be restrained about it and keep it balanced so you know this these are the things that you think about um, what was the mustard drawn with the mustard was drawn with this Posca pen you need Posca anyway so yes, this, again, so this is all about squares, and then these squares kind of fit into it, and then this was joined together. I can't really explain how it works. I, I mean, I, I, I uh, sorry, go back to me. Um, I wish that I, I mean, maybe, maybe some of you could, any of you know anything, if you've been trained in graphic design, maybe you could write to me and explain it to me or tell me what to look at. Right now, I just operate from my gut. It's worked out pretty well for a couple decades, but who knows? When I'm trying to explain to people, I'm like, I don't know entirely what to say sometimes. So. Um, Thistle says, I never know what to write. Well, this is an interesting thing to think about. There are different ways, different ways to approach what you're writing. One way is to write what it is. A donut. Not very interesting. Doesn't really add anything. Might work as a visual element, but doesn't really add to the communication. So who cares? Might as well not have done it. Another thing you could do is you could write something interesting or insightful or emotional or something you feel about it that's really just for you you know so I could draw that um, just think, like for instance the, 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 the hot dog I could write a bit about 
how I'm feeling about missing seeing a baseball game. And I could write about that. It's just some thought that comes to me while I do it. Um, I could write about just feeling like I'm not getting enough exercise, being cooped up in quarantine and can't go to the gym. And I could write about food being an anesthetic. Um, or I could write about something, I could write about birthdays. I could write about actually nothing to do with these images at all. It could be kind of interesting. I could just write uh, about how I feel about something completely different. I could write about a dream that I had last night, and then there could be this kind of surreal juxtaposition of those elements. So I think what happens a lot of times, I see people writing next to their drawings, and a few things are going on. One, they're not writing anything that's interesting, but they've spent 15 minutes, say, doing the drawing, and they've spent 15 seconds writing the caption. And what that 15 seconds means is that they didn't put a lot of thought or wit or interest in the language and the, what they wrote. And also they wrote it, their penmanship isn't good, their calligraphy is not good. The line quality of the writing is part of the page. So if you spend a lot of time doing a drawing and then you write something kind of crappy, meaningless, and poor, badly next to it, it undermines the whole thing. But if you spend a little bit longer and think, you know, you could even write it, do a rough draft somewhere else, write it on your phone. Think of what you want to say. Think of how you want to space it out and then put it in. I think that writing and word and pictures together is beautiful. It is the foundation of what I've always made. I think that it's not enough to just make pictures. I want to have words next to them. This wall behind me notwithstanding. You know, generally I believe in journaling. I love calligraphy. I love, uh, you know, notebooks of scientists and explorers. You know, I'm just intrigued by all that stuff. And it's all about the different levels of meaning. The fact that the pictures add something to the words and the words add something to the pictures. It's a, it's a, it's a dance between them. And, you know, you need to, I think, just put, maybe, I mean, you don't necessarily have to think of yourself as a writer. That's, that's, it's, that's not what it's about. It is, in the end, I think, journaling more than anything else. But what's nice is that when you look back on it, you don't, you're not just flipping through pages of sketches. Interesting, not so much. Sort of, can be. But when you write with it, it stops you. Even yourself or somebody else you share it with, it stops you. And when it stops you, you look at the drawings more closely. You know, it's not just like binging through, you know, fast forwarding through a bunch of drawings. It's a bit more of engagement, it slows you down. And also, you're reflecting your mindset at the time. And that mindset is, to me, a point of all of this. You know, is what are you thinking, how are you feeling? So, I leave you with that thought. You could write poetry, you could write quotes, you could write whatever you want, but do write something. You know, and also, a lot of people say I have lousy handwriting. Well, do you work on it? You know, um, we've offered courses at Schedule School on lettering. Um, you know, I think it's something that you can absolutely learn. And I'm not talking about taking calligraphy classes, which I find boring. But I think it's just like slowing down, saying like I want to, I want the quality of the of my lettering, those lines, to mean something. You know, so. You can, you, can, you can think about that some. We'll talk about this some more if you're interested, because I think that it is something that I haven't talked much about, but is absolutely central to what I do and have always done. I am a writer who draws. I'm not an artist who happens to put some words down. Writing is at the core of what I care about. And my inspiration comes from the illustrated books that I had as a kid. You know, I think about Wind in the Willows or Winnie the Pooh, and I think about Ernest Shepard's drawings, but then I also think about the type that goes around them, and I think about the way that that picture sits on the page. And that combination of things always really, really excited me. That's what made me love books. That's what made me love drawing and writing. And that is part of who I am. And, and, and hopefully you feel that way too, because we all have those experiences. And you know, I urge you to take up writing in your sketchbook. Don't think of it as just a bunch of pages. Don't think of it as just stuff to hang on the wall. 
but words are such a powerful visual element, conceptual element too. All right. Good. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. Sorry about the uh, delayed start. Sorry about the uh, the leaf blower. But um, in the future, I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm always going to do what I did today, where I put up an example with this uh, with the resource worksheet that I'm always uploading is, so you can see it right from the very beginning and download it, because I think it's probably helpful for you to have that picture there if, um, rather than just on my screen. So, um, yes, it's been nice talking to you. If you would like, please um, do use this tag, hashtag SBS draw with me. Uh, yeah, let me put it up here on my heart. Um, if you share on social media, then uh, I'll be able to see what you're doing. If you share it in the Schedule School schoolyard, I'll be able to see what you're doing too. Um, so I'd like to see your delicious treats. And uh, it was fun hanging out with you today. And I'll see you again next Thursday. Tomorrow, we are driving up to Northern Arizona for the weekend to celebrate my wife's birthday. We're going to be on the edge of the Grand Canyon. If I'm not here next Thursday, it's possible that I fell in, but unlikely. So we'll meet here. And uh, in the meantime, by the way, uh, let me remind you again, if I haven't today, that it would be nice if you if you wanted to text me, because if you text me, I can also send you this information about the PDF. But I also send for those of you who are already on my texting list, uh, I send out stuff almost every day: drawings that I've done, ideas that I've had, artists that I like, pep talks, whatever it is. Um, and it's also a chance for you to tell me what you'd like to tell me. So we can dialogue. So if you text me, it only works in the United States, I'm afraid, right now. Ultimately, hopefully it will expand, but right now it's only for the United States. And, um, you know, but if you're not in the United States and you want to contact me other ways, you know, please do. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks very much, and 